Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Welcome today to another Pagani design timepiece for your perusal. If you've watched any of my previous reviews of Pagani's or indeed anybody else's previous reviews of Pagani's, there are plenty of them out there now, you should pretty much know what to expect. You should expect zero design originality. If you squint at this one, it's a Rolex GMT Master II. If you open your eyes, it's a guy in a Batman costume that they bought on eBay. But you do get an outrageous set of specifications for your money. This one is currently on the AliExpress sale at 85 US dollars. Normal price is 95 US. I'll leave a link to that one in the description of the video. For your $85, you get an all stainless steel watch with a fully automatic GMT movement with date, you get sapphire crystal, ceramic bezel insert, all metal, bracelet with solid links, solid end links with screws and an adjustable on the fly clasp. 100 meters of water resistance and a screw down crown. That is just an insane amount of watch for $85. But and there is a but. I've got two of these, I've got the Batman on my wrist and I've also got a Pepsi model in and I'll show you both. Neither of them is what I would describe as perfect. There are a couple of little QC niggles with each watch. I emailed Pagani when these ones arrived and I'll tell you what they said when we get further into the video. So, tons of specs, incredible looking watch for the money. Just make sure both your eyes are wide open if you're in for one of these. Let's flip the camera and have a look at them. Okay, I'm not going to hang around today considering I gave you the entire spec list in the introduction of the video. Like I said, I've got two of these in. The Pepsi one, I always think Cokes and Pepsi of these GMTs look great on a bit of distressed leather because they're kind of vintage style colorways. I also have the Batman which I've got on the supplied steel bracelet. Now I did say there was a QC glitch with both of these watches. See if you can spot the one on the Batman before I tell you what it is. So GMT Master 2 clone, GMT Master 2 dimensions, those being 40mm in diameter, 47mm lug to lug, 13.6mm thick, 20mm lug width, tapering down to 155 half, back up to 185 half at the clasp, sized up for me, 7 inch wrist, I had to take a couple of links out of each side, this one weighs in at 147 grams. Now, sapphire crystal, for those cynically minded, I will pop in some footage of a sapphire crystal check that I did here with my diamond selector, comparing it to some hard legs of a Seiko 5 and domed sapphire on my Oris and it passed with flying colors. Important to note, this is only a 60 click unidirectional rotating bezel, so you don't quite get that bi-directional bezel that you would ideally hope for from a GMT watch, but you know, $85, it packs a hell of a lot, it doesn't pack a bi-directional bezel. The bezel on this one is a little bit bouncy as well, but what it means, because it's only 60 click and not 120 click, you're not really gonna be able to track a third time zone. Not as precisely as you would be able to anyway, it doesn't always line up the way you want it to. Case finishing is fine, again the surface texture is mimicking the GMT, high polished sides, we've got a screw down Pagani crown with a logo, crown guards there, easy to grip, no problem at all, and brushing on the lugs. Reasonable finish to the bezel, it's perhaps just a touch sharper than I would have liked, but at least you get to grip it, no problems at all. Again, like the Rolex, high polished mid links and a brushing on the two outer links. Pagani clasp, if you've seen this one before, they do a kind of reasonable impersonation of a Rolex clasp. It's a proper machine clasp here as well. And there is a flip-flop adjustment. So you've got a little bit of on-the-fly adjustment. These do tend to be quite stiff out of the box. This one, not too bad. If you want to adjust it here, you can see there are indents for micro-adjust. You do need quite a fine Bergeon tool to do that, but it's not impossible. It's just a bit fiddly, I guess. That's why they give you the on-the-fly as well. I'll pop in some macro on the dial, and it's actually all well done for the money. Applied indices, the kind of classic triangle at 12, batons at 6 and 9, usable cyclops there at the 3 o'clock, and circular applied indices everywhere else. All the printing is fairly crisp. I don't think they've overcluttered the dial. Personally, I could be doing without the word Explorer underneath the Pagani design logo. I don't think it adds anything. But hey, they just wanted to pack in one more Rolex reference if you hadn't already taken the hint. And the loom on this GMT is actually about the best loom that I've come across on a Pagani. You don't get much loom for less than 100 bucks. I haven't really encountered any dive style watches with good loom for less than a ton, but this one doesn't do too badly for itself. The GMT hands loomed and the, the main hour and minute hands do do a reasonable job of hanging on in there towards the end of the 20 minute test period. 
So display case bank, screw down, 100 meters of water resistance and solid end links. Now that movement is a Pearl DG5833 GMT. Not much information I could find about it. I've also heard it referred to as a Mingzhu 5833. I popped both of these on the time grapher with the kind of default 53 degree lift angle. The Pepsi one was running a little fast coming in, plus 15, plus 20. I actually got pretty good results from the Pac-Man that was running at plus two, plus three, plus four. Both of them, to give them their due, had healthy amplitudes and minimal beat errors. There is, however, a lever for adjustment here. So if you want to take the back off, it shouldn't be too difficult. And you can tweak the timing of these yourself if you are so inclined. So if you unscrew the crown to the first position, the movement can be manually wound by rolling the crown forward. Pull it out to the second position. If you roll the crown forward, you control the date there. And as you can see, if you roll it backwards, GMT hand is fully independent, so it isn't slaved in the way that the Vostok GMT was that I reviewed a few months ago, and it doesn't only click forward half an hour at a time like the ETA 2893s in the Christopher Ward and the Zelos that I reviewed a couple of weeks ago. So to that end, it's really not that bad. Pull it out one more, and the movement hacks, and the hour and minute hand can be adjusted thereafter. No issues with this one either with the crown, all screwing down, threaded quite nicely. And they really do look more expensive than the price tag suggests when you get them on the wrist. They wear well, there's a reason that so many companies rip off Rolex's design, and it's because they're just so comfortable on wrist. And as discussed, I love a bit of distressed leather on the Pepsi and Coke style colorways. This is a collar ebb spoleto. 20 mil lug width on this model means you shouldn't have difficulty swapping it out should the need arise. Legibility is never an issue with these watches when you get them into some natural light. The hands and indices all very well proportioned thanks to Rolex. No anti-reflective coating on that sapphire though, but again, you can't expect too much for the money. But what were my QC issues? What were the two moans and nickels that I mentioned earlier on? Well, did you spot my problem with the Batman? Take a look at the bezel insert. That blue should extend halfway up the six and not kind of halfway down the six. I did email Pagani about this. I sent them a photo and they said that they were aware of the mistake, that they had taken steps to rectify it and that all models that were being sold from this point on would have the correct insert. But have you bought one before now? Did you get the same bezel insert as me? It's not perhaps crushingly noticeable, but it's not great, is it? And on the Pepsi one, perhaps you can see it on the bottom of the crown guards there. There's a little bit of over brushing. It's brushed rather than polished. Again, not critical, but not fantastic. I've said it before, but it does bear repeating again. Your money spread very thinly across these Paganis, so you wouldn't necessarily expect them to have incredible quality control. I wouldn't have expected them to cock up the bezel like that though. Glad to hear that they have resolved that issue for all future sales. So don't expect a Rolex, don't expect an heirloom, don't expect perfection, but you can expect something that looks fantastic and offers more for your money than you get from pretty much anything else. So there you have it, another truly outrageous value-packed timepiece from Pagani Design with a few rough edges as pointed out. Like I said, if you get a good one, these things are incredible. There's nothing else that can touch them for the cash, but you don't necessarily always get a good one. Thanks for watching. I will see you soon.